you, mighty Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Amen. Please, if you have a testimony, please document your testimony with the admin or any minister that is available. And if you have a testimony online, click on the link below the YouTube and you shall share your testimony with the people of the Lord. Once again, put your hands together to the Lord. I appreciate Jesus as we welcome the, the choir. Hallelujah. From the moment that I wake up, hey, hallelujah, until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God.
Congratulations. Let's join our hands together. Make it louder. Louder. Add your voice to it. Please, let's have our seat in God's presence. On behalf of Jesus, the owner of the church, and our resident pastor this morning, I want to welcome you to today's service covenant day of long life. Praise God. And we shall be calling ourselves to worship this morning as we read for Psalm 91, verse 1 to 16. Praise God. Psalm 91, verse 1 to 16. And we shall be reading responsively. Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snail of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 4. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day. Verse 6. A thousand shall fall at like thy side, and ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Verse 8. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high the habitation. Verse 10. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12. Thou shalt tread upon lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Verse 14. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16, together, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. For emphasis, verse 15 and 16 says, For he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver and honor him. Verse 16, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That will be our testimony today. Let's join us together for Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to this covenant day of long life and anointing service. We are so glad you are here. Please carefully note the followings. Number one, 40th anniversary celebration. The 40th anniversary celebration of Liberation Mandate comes up May 2nd to 9th, 2021. Recently, God said to his servant, this event shall be more than 40 shilu put together in impact. Therefore, it is worth taking a whole week off in order for every one of us to step fully into our prophetic promised land. Everyone should be prepared for an encounter of a lifetime. Number two, Operation Who is on the Lord's Side. Our special outreach to, unsaved, con to the unsaved concludes today. Every winner that has engaged wholeheartedly, both in prayer and in reaching out to the unsaved, Receive the full delivery of your open rewards in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, Covenant Hour Prayer. Covenant Hour Prayer is every weekday at 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. and on Saturday at 9 a.m. To join, please call 1647-497-9358 and the access code is 418-611-725-ASH. Amen. 
Number four, midweek communion service. The midweek communion service is this Wednesday, April 21st, stream live on our website, www.winnerschapel2.org slash live, and on all our social media platforms. As our custom is, we shall be waiting on the Lord in prayers and fasting and break the fast with the Holy Communion. Time is 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Number five, Winner's Satellite Fellowship. In light of government guidelines regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, our WSF meetings now hold at our various fellowships online platform. The next meeting takes place on Saturday at 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Number six, Ontario Public Health Restrictions. Consequent to the new provincial public health restrictions guidelines, religious services are limited to 10 persons for indoor or outdoor worship. Therefore, we encourage you to connect to our live services on our website or any of our social media platforms. Number seven, next Sunday at WCI Toronto, hallelujah. Next Sunday, April 25th, 2021, shall be our special monthly Thanksgiving and dedication service. Come expecting definite encounters with God via his word, in person or as you connect with your family members, friends, and other loved ones on our live streaming on our website, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Service begin at 9 a.m. for first service and 11.30 a.m. for second service. Number eight, electronic giving. Be reminded that you can give your tithe, offering, and other kingdom advancement seats online securely on the church website, www.winnerschapeltoronto.org. Also remember, text to give, which allows you to give from your cell phone by simply texting the word give, G-I-V-E, to 1778-764-1387 and follow the instructions. Jesus is Lord. You are next to be announced to your world in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. In this glorious service, it is testimony time. It is testimony time. I will be reading to you some of the documented testimony. Amen. Number one, turn around error. Praise God, the Almighty Father. I thank God for his mighty hand of favor and healing upon my family in Jesus' name. Firstly, my brother in UK was in coma for 10 days. I came to the resident pastor and he prayed and anointed his picture. To the glory of God, he came back to life with perfect soundness and wholeness. <laughs> Secondly, my daughter and family all had COVID-19. The resident pastor prayed. They also engaged in mystery of kingdom such as mantle, anointing oil, and also joined the covenant hour of prayer and were healed of COVID, COVID to the glory of his name. Finally, Papa said, if you can't go out, go up. So I have been using the intercessory prayer guidelines, seven of them to pray every day as we have been in lockdown. The God of this commission showed up. My grandson won the Lauren Scholarship Award 2021 out of 6,084 children that applied. Only 30 were chosen, and my grandson, Ulua Tony, was one of them. Seven God pays. To God be all the glory and praise in the name of Jesus. And the testifier is Elder Agbaji, WCI Toronto. Hallelujah. Before I proceed, let me call Pastor Sunday to prepare to share his testimony while I read the last, this one, documented one. Hallelujah. 22 years death plague in family destroyed. The male graduate in my family died within the age of 42 to 47 for 22 years. When I clocked 41, I began to key into the prophetic utterance from the bishop. I read the book, Fulfilling Your Days, and Declare God's Word over my life. On April 6, 2013, I marked my 58th birthday. I blessed the name of the Lord for destroying 22 years death plague in our family. The testifier is Patrick Olajidi. Hallelujah. Pastor, your name and what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Pastor Usa, Itan Usagi Usunde. I've come today to return glory to God for his goodness, for his mercies, 
that endures forever in my life and family in Jesus Christ's precious name. Also to appreciate God's servant, our resident pastor, who has been a, a great blessing to me and my family on this mountain. So on behalf of myself and family, as I read this testimony, whatever God does shall be forever. On behalf of me, myself, and my family, I've come to return all the glory to God for his mercies and truth sake, who have not allowed the enemy to ask us, where is now my God? God Almighty, having destroyed an age-long protracted barrenness and miscarriage from my family on the platform of kingdom service, by his mercies, when I, was, when I had the opportunity to go on a mission field in Venezuela, April 2017, and April 2018, on the 18th, God gave me a bouncing miracle twins. The enemy struck with an attack of a hole in one of the baby's hearts. I and my wife decided that we will not tell anyone except God alone, whose mercies endure us forever, and, and who gives good and perfect gifts. So we apply the anointing oil, we engage kingdom advancement prayer and endeavors, and more specifically, we pray specific healing prayer for our daughter, trusting God, whose message endure forever, to show up. And he did. Hallelujah. My miracle twins are now three years old by God's grace today. Growing from strength to strength, from glory to glory, working strong in the spirit. To God alone be all the glory forever. Hallelujah. Praise. praise, praise the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, lift up your hands and give God the glory from the depth of your heart because you are next in line to testify. For all these wondrous works, his servant is still in the house to declare the word of promise upon your life. You are definitely returning to testify. Amen. Make it better for the Lord this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Very surely we'll be upstanding to pray. Wherever you are globally, you will join me shortly and we will pray this in this manner. We'll be saying, Father, continue to send your war with power in all our services all through the year, making this church a green pasture where the sheep are well nourished and established. Acts chapter 6, verse 7, Bible says, And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Please join me wherever you are globally, please. As we begin to pray this morning, say, Father, continue to send your word with power in all our services all through the year, making this church a green pastures where the sheep are well nourished and established. Somebody lift up your voice this morning. Make sure you are praying. Father, continue to send your word with power in all our services all through the year, making this church a green pastures where the sheep are well nourished and established in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, we ask of you this morning to continue to send your word with power. Continue to send your word with power in all our services all through the year, making this church a green pasture where the sheep are well nourished and established in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody is praying this morning. Father, we ask of you, continue to send your war with power in all our services all through the year, making this church a green pastures where the sheep are well nourished and established. Make sure you are praying, lift up your voice this morning and pray to God. Father, continue to send your war with power. Continue to send your word with power in all our services all through the year. In the name of Jesus, making this church 
hey, green pastures. Oh Lord, where the sheep are well nourished and established in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask of you continue to send your word with power in all our services all through the year, making this job a green pastures where the sheep are well nourished and established in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord Almighty, we ask of you, send your word with power, because when you send your word, deliverance take place. When you send your word, oh Lord, your people are free. Father, we pray this morning, continue to send your word with power in all our services all through the year, making this church a green pasture where the sheep are well nourished and established in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is through your power that the enemy will submit themselves unto us. Father, we ask of you this morning, Continue to send your word with power in all our services all through the year, making this job winners chop international throne where the sheep are well nourished and established. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, lift up your voice, pray to God, intensify your prayer. Father, continue to send your word with power in all our services all through the year making this church a green pastures where the sheep are well nourished and established. Let's celebrate the name of the Lord this morning. Let's appreciate him this morning. You know God has had you. Glorify him. Appreciate him. For the Lord, we thank you. Blessed be to your holy name, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. For in Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Put your hands together for the Lord Almighty and you may please be seated. Praise the Lord. Surely again we shall be rising up to pray. And we shall be saying, Father, set a seal of longevity upon every worshiper in this covenant day of long life service. Amen. Psalm 91 verse 16. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is you the Lord is talking about. So wherever you are, rise up on your feet. For everyone connected online, let's rise up in our various locations as we lift up our voices in faith, as we speak, speak to the Lord right now. Father, set a seal of longevity upon every worshiper in this covenant day of long life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, set a seal of longevity upon every worshiper in this covenant day of long life service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, set a seal of longevity upon every worshiper in this covenant day of long life service in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you have also ordained today as our anointing service. Let the seal of the Holy Ghost come upon every worshiper in this service as they are anointed afresh again today. Father, let the seal of longevity rest upon every worshiper in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, by that seal of longevity, let every plague of untimely death be destroyed. Let every plague of affliction whatsoever be crushed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you have declared that no plague shall come upon your people. By the seal of longevity in this service today, every plague out there, they will not find a way to come into the life of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, after that seal has come upon them in this service today, as they go out, O oh Lord, the plague out there will run away from them. In the mighty name of Jesus, every force of hell that is manifesting itself through the plague of COVID-19 will not find expression in the life of any worshiper in this service today, in the life of every winner family, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, for every family represented in this service, let the seal of longevity come upon them in the mighty name of Jesus, that the covenant of long life will be established for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone that is under any oppression or satanic covenant by the seal of longevity, such evil covenant are destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Your anointing is coming upon your people again today. You say you will anoint them with fresh oil. Let the freshness of your grace 
come upon them by the seal of longevity. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the Holy Ghost move mightily in this service to rest upon your people. In the name of Jesus, wherever they are connected to this service, as your word locates them, O Lord, as your word proceeds forth from this altar, let the seal of longevity be established upon every worshiper. In the mighty name of Jesus, that long life will be their testimony. In the name of Jesus, that it shall be said concerning these ones, that long life is their portion. In the name of Jesus, for every family member going through whatsoever challenge of the enemy out there, Father, as these ones are anointed today, the seal of longevity will locate all their loved ones, and they shall be brought out from every valley of death. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we call upon you in this service, because you have brought us today, and you say today is covenant day of long life. We pray that your covenant will be established in the life of your people in this service today. Every covenant of death, every covenant of sudden death, every covenant of untimely death, it shall be swallowed up today by the covenant of long life. As you set a seal of longevity upon every worshiper in this service today, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, in this service today, the gates of hell have no choice but to bow. In the mighty name of Jesus, they could not hold Jesus us captive. Therefore, they will not hold any worshiper captive anymore. In the name of Jesus, the liberation mandate for long life will speak in the life of every worshiper, and it shall continue to speak in all their days and in all their years ahead of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you. Let's begin to appreciate him. Let's begin to bless his holy name. Lord, we give you all the praise. Blessed be your mighty name, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands to the Lord as we take our seat. It's offering time. Please package your offerings, your tithe, your kingdom investment, and every other thing you have brought today to bless the name of God with. Jesus speaking in the book of John 21, 15, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Lovest thou me? And he said, Yes. Thou knowest that I love thee. Then he said, Feed my lamp. May the love of God this morning empower each and every one of us to a new dimension of giving. You can also give by texting plus 1778 seven six four one three eight seven and also log into the website www.winnerschapeltoronto.org if you are done packaging your offerings you are tight your kingdom investment please rise up on your feet with your seat lifted up and speak a word to that feet speak a word father lord we have returned again this morning to say thank you lord out of the abundance you have given us we have returned to say thank you Father, thank you, Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, we bless your name, O oh Lord. Thank you, mighty Jehovah, for this great opportunity to give in your house. Lord, we have returned like that one leper to say thank you. Father, we give you praise, O oh Lord. Lord, by this seed in our hand today, O oh Lord. Lord, set, O oh Lord, a longevity of life by this seed. Father, Lord, we give you praise. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. To give in your house, we say thank you. Father, for the breakthroughs, we say thank you. For the testimonies, we say thank you. Father, we give you praise, O oh Lord. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. Speak to that seed in your hand. Speak a word. Speak a word. Speak a word. God here is open this morning. Father, Lord, by this seed, O oh Lord, turn around blessings. Supernatural turn around. Divine blessings on the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise. Take all that glory, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. Amen. This seed in our hand today will answer in heaven. Amen. And it will speak in your finances amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. amen and amen. Comfortably have your seat as we cast our offerings and as we invite the praise team.
Thank you, Jesus. I shall live and not die. Shall we lift up our voices one more time as we return all the glory to him? This morning, worship him and give him all the glory. Thank him and thank him. Thank him for this great privilege to be alive and well. You have come to Zion this morning. Blessed is that man that that caused to appear before you. Now appreciate him. Give him all the glory. Give him all the glory for life, for provision, for protection, for all the benefits that we have enjoyed. Now appreciate him. Worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you and thank you, Lord, for your divine protections. We give you all the glory. We have experience of your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We return this morning to say thank you. Blessed be your name. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. For you are God, there's none like you. There's no God but you. You are God, there's none like you. We worship you, Jesus. Take all of the glory. Blessed be your name. He's God from the beginning. Worship him in that song. We give you all the glory this morning. For you are God, there's none like you. We thank you, Lord, for your abiding presence in our midst. We thank you for confirming again and again your word. Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for the testimonies. Oh, whatever you have done, you continue to do and you will do. There's no impossibility with you. Father, we say thank you. This morning, we take it to heart to thank you for our fathers and mothers and sisters and brothers and our children. 
Lord, for healing all of our infirmities. Father, we say thank you. You are God all by yourself. There's no one that can be compared to you. And so this morning we have come to receive of you. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, cause your voice to be heard upon this mountain. We have come for an encounter. We have come for a touch by your word this morning and the mystery of the holy anointing oil because the anointing that breaks yokes and destroys burdens is here. Jesus, you are the physician. Father, by your word, heal every infirmity. Amen. Confirm your good word to us again. And we thank you because you have done just that. So you will be all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have worship. Give that all a clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. And please have your seats in-house, all over the world, wherever you are streaming from. The Lord bless you. You're welcome in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Across the GTA, North and South, uh, North Bay, Thunder Bay, and um, London, Windsor, uh, Kingston, Oshawa, everywhere. Barry, Alliston, across the land. And of course, across uh, America and Africa and Europe, we're glad you're in this service. The Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Financial fortune is my heritage. Financial fortune is my heritage. That is our prophetic focus for the month. And in our Sunday services, we'll be looking at gateways to financial fortune. Gateways to financial fortune fortune. This morning, this is the third week as we look at this series, as we continue in this series. Gateways to financial fortune. Now, when we hear words like this, whether the prophetic focus or the teaching series, there are words there, all of it is important obviously, but there are words there that are key or stand out. Amen. There are words that stand out and here, gateways to financial fortune. Financial fortune is the destination, if you will, the place to go to. But there's how to get there. There are gates, gateways. There's what must or gives us access to financial fortune. But every door will open to you this morning. And every demonic gatekeeper that has kept you from assessing God's plan and purpose for your life, they come under judgment. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Gateways. Because if you know the way, you don't struggle. If you know which way to go. And much more, if you have the key to the gate, you don't sweat. You simply put your hands in your pocket and go and open and assess all that is available. You will not struggle in the name of Jesus Christ. The psalmist was praying. He said, open down my eyes, O Lord, that I may assess. That's what it means. That I may behold all the wonders. Your law, Psalm 118, I mean 119 verse 18. The Lord will grant you access this morning. The eyes of your understanding will come alive. In Jesus' precious name. Gateways to financial fortune. Now, if you see what Psalm 103, I believe, verse 7, Psalm 103, verse 7. Now, the Lord, Moses knew, he knew the ways of the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. He knew the ways. The Lord make known the ways to Moses. Because he knew the ways, miracle signs and wonders brought by his hand. His act to the children of Israel. So there's a point, man, there's somebody that knew the way, that stood. Thus saith the Lord, go not what? Oh, do you have gone and encompassed this mountain long enough? Deuteronomy chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3. Go ye not what? How was Moses able to decree and declare part time? This is the way. Stay right here. Don't depart. Move now. Get up and move now. Because he knew the ways of the Lord. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will reveal his ways to you. Particularly this month, gateways to financial fortune, the Lord will reveal the ways to assess financial fortune. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Gateways to financial fortune. I am the Lord that giveth thee power to get wealth. Other areas, other places may be attractive. Other things may tell you this is the way. People may put you in a holiday, well, maybe I shouldn't say, in some hall, and tell you you will buy a house in Hawaii or the Caribbean in two months. That's a Ponzi scheme. I'm sure you're familiar with those. Right? There are ways of the world to riches, to get wealth, to make it overnight. But those are not enduring ways. Those are not the right ways. It ways to financial fortune, the right kind of fortune, the kind of that God giveth that adds no sorrow to it. That is what we're talking about. And in the name of Jesus Christ, it shall be revealed to you again in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our Father, Bishop David Abir, say again, he said, if you know God's intentions, you will enjoy his extensions. You know his intention, you will enjoy his extensions. Now, we're talking about kingdom wealth, financial fortune. Now, when we know the ways of God, the why, you know, in the natural, uh, you've heard this, people will say, you must have a why, right? What is your why? What is your drive? What, what moves you? Why are you going to wake up in the morning to go to work? Because it is the why that keeps you going, that fuels your drive, that makes you, oh, my muscles are aching, but I must go. There is a why. So, concerning financial fortune, if we know God's intentions, then we will enjoy his extensions. When we know the why, why God will give us access the key to the gate to the gate to financial fortune. We must know this why. Recognize why God blesses us. And quickly, number one, look at some of these. Number one is that we must recognize or understand that God's prosperity plan is rested in our readiness to be a blessing. How ready are you to be blessed, to be a blessing? Because his plan hinges on that. You and I, our readiness to be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 3. Get thee out of your father's house to a place that I'll show you. And if you will, in verse 2, if you decide to do that, then I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great. Now, look at the dimensions, the extensions of the blessing, if you will. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. Amen. And make your name great. And then you shall be a blessing. Not just make your name great, I mean, great and all be blessed alone. You will be what? A blessing. And now I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. We must recognize this fact. God's prosperity plan hinges on our understanding and desire to be a blessing. The blessings of God is coming upon you in Jesus' precious name. Now, that promise was to Abraham, but by extension, by the blood of Jesus, redemption, now we have access to that same order of blessing. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. And if ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? And yes, according to the promise, this month, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will assess this financial fortune. The Lord will give you rest in Jesus' precious name. So what are we saying? Until we understand this fact, we may never experience the fullness of the blessings of God. So it's not about being the only one on top of the hill with the best house and everybody comes and pay obeisance. No. It's to be blessed in order to be a blessing. We may never experience all the fullness of the blessings of God until we recognize that we are blessed to be a blessing. 
Acts chapter 20, in that verse 35, Acts 20, 35. I've showed you all things. How? That's so laboring, you ought to support the weak. You ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus, who said what? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Until we recognize it, it is more blessed. There's more blessings. There's more extensions of the blessings of God to being a blessing, helping the weak, strengthening the weak. Receive that grace. Jesus' precious name. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. And, you know, these words, sometimes if you read it, don't exclude yourself. We should not exclude ourselves. Charge those that are rich. And you are rich. Amen. We're part. I mean, if you look at the, again, don't limit it to where you are right now in Canada. You say, well, I'm here to have my house in Milton or Oakville or whatever, Richmond Hill, you know, those zip codes or mail codes, you call them. You are rich by looking at the global uh, indices. So this is speaking to you and I, all of us. Charge them that are rich in this world. Why? That they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, all things to enjoy. The Lord will give you richly all things to enjoy. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not lack any good thing. And all things richly to enjoy. For what? In that verse 18. He said that they do good, that we do good, that we do good, that they be rich in good works, not in rich, uh, uh, be rich in good things, material things. No. Nothing wrong. Nice is nice, right? Nice is good. But be rich in what? Good works. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. In the name of Jesus Christ, this grace to be willing to distribute and communicate, receive it in Jesus' precious name. When we do that, verse 19, he said, we are laying up, laying up store for themselves in a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. Praise God. We must understand the secret of being a blessing. That is what grants us access to the more. You are blessed to be a blessing. Receive that grace in Jesus' precious name. Now, so the why. Why will God bless us? Why does he bless us? Number one, God blesses us to establish the covenant of abundance. To establish his covenant of abundance. Again, our anchor scripture, Deuteronomy 8, 18. But you shall remember the Lord your God. For he is he that giveth you what power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant. He gives us power for wealth. He blesses us to establish his covenant that he has sworn to our fathers as it is this day. So it's enduring, enduring it's ongoing. It's not only for the days of Moses and Abraham and David. It's even now to establish his covenant. That is why he blesses us. That is why he gives us power to get wealth. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that you, all of us, through his poverty, might be rich. Might be rich. To establish his covenant. That is why he blesses us. Number two, why will God bless you? To promote his kingdom on the earth. It is for his kingdom, for his kingdom. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17. Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My city is true prosperity, my city, my kingdom, my church. True prosperity will be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Gospel, the spread of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ requires money, prosperity. That is why he blesses you and I. He puts the resources in our hands to advance the kingdom of God. And the devil is mad. So he stirs up some people that are ignorant. Say, so what, what does the church need money for? How will the, I mean, the gospel be preached? To the far reaches of the earth without money. 
Now, if you care to read, I love biographies and history and all of that. How did the gospel come to Africa? In churches like ours, like this, volunteers, you know, people that have a call on their life, stand up in that church to, you know, essentially sow their life to missionary work. And then what happened? The church gets the money to send them, to put them on the ship, and then to get them. These are unknown places. They don't even speak the language. So they get them there and make provision for them. I was reading um, the story of um, uh, Oswald J. Smith, the biography, his biography, and of course his wife, uh, biography, how um, she turned essentially Toronto upside down. Then she went, she went to school in, um, I think it's Seneca, New York, graduated and went to the mountains of West Virginia, two of them, young girls, to go and do missionary work. Now, this, are, this is 1800s. Now, the mountains of Virginia then, West Virginia, the Appalachian Mountains, destitute places for these young girls, volunteer. But they need a sponsor of a group of people back in Toronto and across the church network. Now, story is not the same. Because prosperity, some money was made available to send some people. Cry yet, thus said a lot of hosts, my cities, my cities, true prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. And you see that Haggai chapter 1, just paraphrasing all of it, that's what essentially saying from verse 5 to 14. He said you should consider our ways. Consider our ways. Think about your ways. Think about what you do. Because all of us, human beings, are selfish in the natural. We all want more, but for ourselves. You have so much, but the result is little. You don't have enough, even though there's, in quote, plenty. You eat and drink and you are not filled because of not considering your ways, because of the house of God, the things of God, the kingdom of God that we have neglected. But what must we do? Verse 8, say, go to the mountain and go and get wood. Re-engage with the advancement of the kingdom of God. Then I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, said the Lord. The Lord will be glorified in your life. In Jesus' precious name. So all the blessings, yes, it's not 100% as we put it to mind for the advancement of his kingdom, then we have access to some of it, not crumbs. Remember, when we know God's intentions, then we enjoy his extensions. So it's not primarily to, you know, um, to be, have the biggest house on the street. The biggest out is a consequence of minding the things of God. Number three, why would God bless you? Number one, remember, for his covenant. Number two, the advancement of his kingdom. Number three, to bless mankind at large, to bless the people of God, to bless human beings. That is why he entrusts, remember, God's wealth, kingdom fortune is an entrustment. And he will only give to those he can trust, will use it for his covenant, for the advancement of his kingdom, and to be a blessing to people, human beings at large. Proverbs 28, verse 27. Proverbs 28, 27. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. Not may not lack. Sometimes we lack. No. He that considers the poor, he that remember people, he gives to the poor. He says he shall not lack. But he that hides his eyes shall have many a curse. But that's not you. Because that's not you. Receive grace to be a giver in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. It is to be a blessing. To people, and you know, it's like a, a concentric rings, you know, ripples in a pond, right? You throw a stone in a pond, what happens? It goes out in ripples. So, of course, it's, you know, there's an inner circle, and then you, you, we're supposed to flow out. Amen. So, the immediate people around you, those that you know, you know, your, you, know you can't now, uh, I think that's what, 1 Timothy 5, 8 or 18. 
He said, anyone that does not consider his family, his, what is he? He's worse than an infidel. Check that out. Is it 5.8 or 5.80? One of those. Okay, thank you. It's 8. If any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith. No matter how much you scream in church, you are not in faith. You may think I'm praying to I'm, I'm okay. You are not okay. That's what scripture says. If you don't provide for your house, for your own, for your wife, for your husband, for your, the children, and then it flows out that way. He said, this person is worse than, I mean, just think about that. Worse than an infidel, he has denied the faith. So God blesses us to be a blessing to mankind at large. Amen. Now, Jesus was speaking in Matthew 25, verse 34 to 40, for time, you know, I'm paraphrasing. You know, he's talking to them about when he was hungry and you gave me meat. When I was in need of shelter, you covered me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. Matthew 25, in that verse 34. And verse 36 says, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And this was, this confounded them. He said, Lord, when, did, when, when were you naked that we clothed you? When were you hungry that we gave you food? He answered, verse 40, I say to you, inasmuch as you have what? Don't need to one of the least of this. You have done it to me. So when we clothe the naked, we cover the naked, not to expose them to the elements or to ridicule. When we give water to the thirsty, food to the hungry, he said, you have done it to the least of man. You are doing it to me to bless mankind at large. Galatians 6.10. As much as we have opportunity, he said, let us do good. Let us do good, not evil. Think good. Do good. To all men, all men, but especially to them who are of the household of faith. So again, you know, that brings to mind the concentric ring, the ripples in the pond, starting from the household of faith and flowing out. Let us do good. So let's look for opportunity to do good. To do good to the least. And we, should, we cannot stay in the place and say, well, if, she be, if you need something, you will have asked me. You know, get eyes. <laughs> we don't wait for somebody to come and beg. So you see something, if you have capacity, why not? You take care of it. Don't wait for somebody to come groveling and crawling Say, okay, you know what? See me tomorrow. You know, that's how the rich people do it in Nigeria. Your rich uncle. <laughs> you have to wake up early to sit at the gate. Hey, Daddy is still sleeping. He's a lie. He's not sleeping. Say, as a matter, he has an appointment. Come back tomorrow. It's not necessary. If you want to do something, do it and get it going. As we have, therefore, opportunity. That is the key word. You have opportunity, let us do good. Now, of course, somebody will ask, well, does that mean I should go hungry? No. Does that mean I should give away everything that I have? No. You do it at your level. You do it at your level. Wisdom is profitable to direct. So nobody's asking you, well, of course, that's not wisdom. For you to give your, uh, what is it? This is April. To give your May rent to your sister because you say, I want to do good. No, you are, you are, you remember? You start with yourself. Amen. You do the good at your level. And it's not true to say, I don't have. You have something. Everybody has something. And I'm speaking to you and I, all of us, in the immediate audience here, under the sound of my voice. Most of us are in Canada, United States, right? We have, believe me. I know there are, tough times, but it's not as tough as some places. There are pictures you see, they make you weep. You know, unless you, thank God for your life, if you grew up in the island and VI and, you know, 
your father was rich, fine, no problem. You may not understand what we're saying. But if you know, you know, there's what they call those of us that rose up from the rock, the rocky places. <laughs> huh? You understand why? So you, don't, you can't get here now and forget where he has brought you from. There's this, uh, I think it's in the mid-90s. I don't know if it's still true now. Uh, you know, the, the, there's a ratio, right? You know, it's not that you are fasting, but there's nothing to eat. So you just fast. <laughs> one meal a day, right? That's what has helped some of us now that I'm used to one meal a day. Right? Say it's zero, zero, 001 or zero, zero, or zero, 010. Zero. <laughs> you just fit it wherever. If it's in the morning, God bless you till tomorrow or whenever it comes. As you have opportunity. Until Jesus comes, I will never pray for a shoe or a tie or, or what to wear. That's, that's over. So spring is here, right? Spring is around the corner. That's what they call spring cleaning. So go to your closet and clean it, clean out. You have not worn something in three months. You don't need it. Amen. Be useful to somebody else. As you have opportunity. But start from where you are. Don't say, ah, let God try me now. If the first million come, you see how I'm a giver. No, you are not a giver. <laughs> start with the $10 or whatever, you know. Because, see, there, there are levels of giving. You may not, because of where you are, you may think, ah, how can I give $10? Somebody needs $10 for gas to get through the week. Just to be able to put gas in the car. And then they have to watch the gauge. You don't just drive anyhow. This is enough to go take me to work and back until payday on Friday. I've been there. I'm no longer there, but I've been there. So you give with discretion. That's what it says, discretion. You give with what? Discretion. It's your money, you budget, you know how much to give. If it's $50 a week, fine, this is it. They may ask you for 100000 no, this is it. Give with discretion. And of course, you have to know who you give to. You don't give to lazy people. Hmm? You don't give to lazy people. So they can just go and wake up and sleep. My, my uncle or my brother will, will send the money from Canada. No. You give them to help. So they also can be blessed to help somebody. Not to take over somebody's life and say, don't do anything. Don't worry. I got you. You're not helping them, right? So you, you give to enhance people's life, right? That's what they say. You know, you teach people to fish. You don't keep giving them the fish. This is how to do it. So, to bless mankind at large. And as we do that, of course, what happened? As with everything in the kingdom, there are benefits that accrue to us. Fringe benefits that accompany this giving covenant. Philippians chapter 4, you know that story, verse 15, verse 4, 15 to 19. 19 is the one we always... Oh, my God, shall supply. Yes, it will meet all your needs. That's true. But it starts from 15. The Philippians know also that the beginning of the gospel, they did something when I departed from Macedonia. He said, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Only the Philippians church understood this mystery of giving and receiving. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent once and again to my necessity. Not because Paul was in need. No, it's not because I needed anything. But I desire fruit may abound to your account. We have accounts in heaven. So as we receive this grace for giving, the fruit is abounding to our account. Your account will not be empty. So your account will not be empty in Jesus' precious name. He said, I have all and I'm full. I'm abound. I am full. I receive from this man, Epaphroditus, that you keep sending back and forth to me. And see this Genesis 8, 20 and 22. An odor of a sweet smell. 
Noah reared a sac altar of sacrifice, clean offerings, and God smelled a sweet savour. And then God the blessings, a sworn blessing, a vow that I will no longer destroy the earth. But as the earth remained, there will be seed time, there will be harvest. That is what Paul is referencing there in Philippians 4, in that verse 18. And then he also sealed it with this blessing. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. The name of Jesus Christ, my God, your God, the God that we serve, we meet, supply all of your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. So what are some of these benefits? Number one, this averts curses and plagues. They averts plagues. Again, I referenced it already, Genesis 8, 22. The earth was destroyed by water, and then after that sacrifice, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, day and night will not cease as long as the earth remains. Amen. You, you remember 2 Samuel 24, uh, there was plague in the land, and, uh, you know, they did something evil, and there was... People were dying. And the word of the Lord came to the prophet and to the king. He said, now go and offer sacrifice. And he went. They at he attempted to give him free. He said, no, I will not offer unto God anything that does not cost me. In reference in 2 Samuel 24, verse 24 and 25. So David offered a bond sacrifice. He bought the land from that man. And then... He offered the sacrifice, bond offering and peace offering. And the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed over Israel. In the name of Jesus Christ, every plague over you is stayed. Receive grace to engage in this covenant of giving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Psalm 41, beautiful verse, verse 1 and 3, you know, in giving to the poor. Blessed is that, the man that considers the poor, that does not close his eyes to the poor, to the needs of others around him, immediate surrounding or far off. So the Lord will deliver him in your trouble. In the time of trouble, he will deliver him. How? Because he considers the poor. He will preserve him and keep him alive. No devil can touch you. you shall be blessed upon the earth. He will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. And in case he needs to be healed, you know, he's challenged in any way. He said, the Lord now will make his bed. God himself. He will make all his bed in his sickness. What great blessing. What great benefit from doing one thing. Understanding this covenant of giving. So he averts plagues. Number two. Not just plagues, but it now provokes divine favor. Divine favor. So it looks like you know what you are doing or how to do it. It looks like, it makes you look like you are smart. Not knowing that it is divine favor. God behind you, with you, for you, working it out. Provokes divine favor. First Kings chapter 3. Solomon loved the Lord from verse 3 on down. He loved, he so much loved the Lord that he went to the mountain, I mean to the altar to offer a bond of sacrifice, thousands. And the same thing, God smelled the server. What, so he gave him a blank check. Ask anything, you will. And you read further in that verse 13, you say now, what you didn't even ask, I will give to you. I have given to you that which you have not asked, both riches, honor, that there have been no more, not any among the kings of the earth, whether in your days or days to come, shall be like you. Divine favor. That is your portion in Jesus' precious name. Second Kings chapter 4, you know that story of, from verse 8 to 16, the story of Elijah, Elisha and this woman of Shinon, the Shinonite woman. By one singular act, he has been going back and forth. She considered, said, no, this guy, I think it will be better. It's a long journey. Let's just find, make a provision for him so he can rest, and the following day he goes off. 
she got what money couldn't get for her. The blessings and the fringe benefits far outweigh what the seed is or the offering is. That's, that's, the, that's the template. That's true. And that's always been. So they made a little corner for him in their house so he can rest. He said, now, ask, what shall we do for this woman? And the servant said, well, I don't know. Is it to speak to the king? To give her a hookup? He said, no, I don't need anything. I'm good. You know, in that story, it tells you that she has given up on that need. It was no longer considered. That would have been the first thing to tell you. They said, no, I'm good. She has given up on hope and it's too late, so I'll just live out the rest of my life or see what it is. The heavens open over her. In the name of Jesus Christ, the heavens are open over you. In Jesus' precious name. And according to the word of the Lord, from the mouth of his servant, she got a child from giving to the prophet. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 8. So we get commensurate to what you give. It's a giving covenant. If you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. But there's how to also, verse 7. Because every man according to what you propose in your heart. Don't let anybody preach to your pocket. There's too many false you know, prophets and pastors and so-called men and women of God who tells you to bring so-so amount to get so-so thing. It's a lie. You don't pay for it. What you propose in your heart, that is what you do. Remember, you give with discretion. You give according to your size, according to what is in your heart, willingly, cheerfully. You don't give grudgingly or of necessity. Now, let's talk about of necessity. You don't give uh, quid pro quo. Well, I need a new job, so I will give this to the resident pastor. I'll get a new job. You may, you may struggle for days because, you, you see, the, the motivation is wrong. You give to the glory of God. Not that somebody told you, come and pay, buy into this anointing. There's nothing to, <laughs> there's not, no anointing to buy into. You go pay, go buy for yourself, right? The, 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 five, I mean, the five wise uh, virgins and the stupid ones. So it may not be enough for, you, for all of us. Go, 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 go get your own. You don't pay, give money to get, at least not from God. In the human system, in the world, you bribe people to get things, not in the kingdom of God. So you don't go to God and say, God, I will give you $50 Sunday today. So by Monday morning, because my bill is 500, I need you to multiply it. That is trading. <laughs> that is not the ways of God. Amen. The giving covenant must be done willingly, cheerfully. Amen. Not grudgingly. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. And then he's able to make all grace abound toward you. And then you have, I'm talking about verse 8 now, yeah. Having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. In the name of Jesus, you are bound to every good work. In Jesus' precious name. But of course, it also secures our children, the generation of our children unborn. Doesn't matter, oh, I'm not married. You will be married and you have children. Amen. Children yet unborn, it secures them. Psalm 112, from verse 1 to, well, from verse 1 to the hope, Psalm 112. But see that, verse 1 and 3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. Because he delights greatly in his commandment, what will he do? He said, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the might upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His righteousness endured forever. Because he's a righteous man, what will he do? Verse 9, he said he has dispersed. Amen. So he gives willingly, not sparingly. He has dispersed, he has given to the poor his righteousness endures forever. His own now shall be exalted with honor. Your own shall be exalted with honor in Jesus' precious name. 
So when we do this, we engage in this mystery, this covenant of giving, for the covenant to be established, for the advancement of the kingdom of God, to be a blessing to humankind, those you know, those you don't know. Then, and we do it willingly, not grudgingly, we secure divine favor. It averts all the plagues and the curses that may be in the world. You are exempted from it. And then, ultimately, the kicker is what? Children unborn. Whether born or unborn, your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, the same fringe benefits continue to speak. That is what we enjoy today by the blood of Jesus. The blessings of Abraham yet speak. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will enjoy all of these blessings. Receive grace to be a partaker of this giving covenant in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Well, today is our covenant day of long life. Covenant day of long life. Now, we know that the God that we serve is a God of times and of seasons. The God of times and of seasons. And this God has an agenda for you and I of good old age. Because you are his child, I'm his child, all of us, by redemption. His agenda is for good old age. Genesis 15, verse 15, after he appeared to um, Abraham, he spoke to him. He said, now, you know, he unveiled the future to him. We said, but for you, what, this is what will happen. He said, you will go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. I shout, uh, you will shout louder, say amen. See, this promise is not just for Abraham. It's for all of us. You will go in peace. When the time comes, you will call your children and say, I'm about to go. Not that uh, they are carrying you everywhere and, and praying. You know, there are some levels, some people who say, God, please take this man. <laughs> no. In good old age, that you know the date, it's time for me to go. When you are traveling anywhere, you know you bought your ticket, you know the date and the time to be at the airport. It's the same thing. You are going home. So you tell everybody, I'm going home. I mean, this is not theory. Maybe you don't have any, it happened to me and I know. So this is reality. It is true. It is biblical and it's happened and it's happening. That's what happened with my dad. He chose when to go. Even when we cry, I, I pleaded with him, say, I'm tired, I'm going. I've waited long enough. And he left. You will go in good old age. That is your testimony. And that's exactly what happened to Abraham. Genesis 25, verse 8. He said, then Abraham gave up the ghost. He died in a good old age. Exactly what God said in chapter 15. He died in a good old age. An old man, full of years. I was gathered to his people. Now, see, in, in the way we speak, right, there's a difference between daddy and, and father or papa, right? Daddy, everybody's daddy. <laughs> you are 20 years old, you are daddy. <laughs> but when you, there's a language, the way we call it in my village, you know, this is, this, that's what it's saying, good old age. The elders, the elders are not daddies. The young men like me were the daddies. That is the promise of God. Good old age. He was gathered to his people. And that is our portion. By redemption. By the blood of Jesus. We have access. Genesis 15. God spoke it. Promise. He fulfilled it in chapter 25. Exactly as he said. And it's the same thing he's saying to you and to me. For all of our mothers, I've said it. Until we say go, you are not going anywhere. <laughs> After all, we don't have any 90-year-old yet. I think our, our father in this church is 80-something. Uh, Baba um, uh, Uchebu, right? He's listening to me now, too. Baba, you are not going anywhere. <laughs> Until we say, because he's 80-something, right? So not yet. So this is a young church. He said, we will go when? In a good old age. Amen. We have access. Again, remember Galatians 3.29. If ye be Christ, then are we all what? Abraham's seed. 
And yes, according to the promise. What promise? You will go to your people in peace. You will die in a good old age. That is the promise. It happened to Abraham. It happened to all of our fathers. It is happening to you and I. In Jesus' precious name. Isn't God so humorous? Now, when did Abraham die? 175 years old. That's a good old age. Remember, he started at 75. So somebody should have said, ah, 75, you are still in your father's house. That's when God met him. In Genesis 12. You start from Genesis 11, 31 down. 75. He now added 100 to it to fulfill his promise. And we know that this God that we serve is specific about the days, the number of our days on the earth. It's not conjecture. It's not uh, maybe. You know, you remember that Genesis, uh, you know, I think 3, verse 6. My spirit will no longer uh, be with man because his flesh is tense after evil. But he gave that number. So his days shall be what? 120 years old. That is the number. Genesis 6, verse 3. He said 120 and exactly what Moses was, 120. So God has a specific number. Now, if, if you, that is, um, what is it? Deuteronomy 34 verse 7, right? It's, 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 he, his natural forces were not abated. He, he was strong. So strong that he went to die on the mountain. Nobody assisted him. There was no, med, what did they call Medivac, right? There was no helicopter, medical uh, evacuation. He went by himself. He climbed the mountain to go die at 120. In the name of Jesus Christ, even this morning, whatever saps your strength, that steals your vitality, medical issues or any issue, you know, there are emotional issues. There are things that we go through that make you older than who you are. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cast the root of them. In the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord is coming upon you afresh in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So you see, it's, it's, uh, I think it was um, David that is said to, to write Psalm 90. You know, the number of the days shall be 70, or by strength it shall be 80, or greater strength, 80. No, he chose 70 and he went in 70. David died at 70. But that's not what God says. Genesis 6, 6, 3. He said what? 120. So you see and say what you want. But may I see 120. And that is for you also. You will not die young. The number of your days, God will fulfill. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, what are we saying? What, what gives us this boldness, this assurance? Gives the boldness that we speak from is from of the Lord. Because Jesus Christ has conquered death. We're well in the 40 days of infallible proofs, right? We just celebrated his death and resurrection. He appeared to them. What happened at the death and resurrection? He took the key from the devil that had it. Adam, the first Adam handed the key to him, to, to the devil. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, came to take it from him. Now he has the key. Jesus Christ has conquered death. Death. Revelations 1, verse 18. I'm he that liveth. Now, I was dead and now I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Jesus has the keys. No devil can touch you. Not your spirit, soul, or body in the name of Jesus Christ. You will live and you will not die. In Jesus' precious name. So that is reality. But we can only have it as far as you can see it. Remember, I just referenced that Psalm 90 and uh, Deuteronomy 34, 7, and Genesis 6, verse 3. The proof. The word was in Genesis 6, 3. The proof. Deuteronomy 34, 7. See, somebody will say, well, uh, that never happened. It happened. Moses went at 120. David saw 70. He left at 70. Psalm 90 from verse 1 to 3. So it will only happen as far as we can see. If you see it, you have it. Genesis 13, verse 14 and 15. The Lord said to um, 
Abraham, after Lot has separated from him, he said, from the place where you are, look north, south, east, and west. For as far as you see, whatever you see, that is what you have. The land that you see it to you, I will give it into your seed forever. And he saw, and so it is. Again, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will live and you will not die. Your portion is 120. You will go when you say, I'm tired. You will not go, not go before your time. No devil will touch you, not your body, not your spirit, not your mind. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jeremiah 1.11. God had to ask him. Jeremiah, what seest thou? Because you have to see something. What do you see? He said, I see a tree of an almond tree. He said, you see right. Moses didn't see. God had to tell him. See, I have made you a God. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. This morning, your eyes will see. Your physical eye, the eye of your understanding, you will see with your spiritual eyes. See beyond what you are going through. Yes, you are challenging your health. But in the name of Jesus Christ, you are coming out of it. It doesn't matter what the doctors have said. It doesn't matter what you are feeling right now. You are feeling it is not reality. Because God is taking it away. It is turned to you for a testimony in Jesus' precious name. Now, that's what we must do. We must take responsibility, as with everything in the, con uh, in the kingdom, to enjoy the reality of this old age we're talking about. Just as Abraham enjoyed it, just as Moses, just as Isaac, Jacob, all of our covenant fathers. They didn't die young. You will not die young. You will not die young. So what must we do? in order to experience our old age heritage in Christ Jesus. Number one, we must receive and believe this promise of a good old age. So don't believe the hype. Don't believe that uh, because your father died at 40, then you start counting down. No, he may have died at 40. You will not die at 40. Amen. Because in some families say, you know, it's part of the testimony we heard this morning, the documented testimony. The devil is just killing the male. Some of them, and if they, they don't cross 50, some of them don't cross 60. No, that's not your portion. Because Jesus Christ has paid the, the price, and he has the key. You will not die. You will live in Jesus' precious name. So number one, you must receive it and believe it, that you will not die. You will live long. You will see your children's children in Jesus' precious name. John chapter 1, verse 12, for as many as receive him, then to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. So you receive and believe in his name, then you have power, you have access to this long life. That is your portion in Jesus' precious name. That is your portion in Jesus' precious name. Number two, then you remain committed to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Not just to be alive, to do the work, the bidding of God. So we must remain Committed to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Exodus 23 and verse 25 and 26, we will do one thing, and you shall serve the Lord your God. And then God will do several other things. Exodus 23 verse 25, serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. This is I mean, Matthew 6, 24 all the way to 33. He said, don't bother, bother about what to eat or drink. The birds of the air, they don't, they don't toil. They don't, God feeds them. So he said now, when you serve him, then he will bless your bread and your water. You don't have to worry about where the next food is coming from or how it will come. It will come, however it will come. Amen. Then he will take sickness away from the midst of you. You will not cast your young, nor be barren in the land. And the number of your days, he said, he will fulfill by serving him. Receive that grace. Receive grace in Jesus' precious name. And of course, finally, we're talking about three points. Number one, receive it, believe it. The word on old age. Then serve it, the interest of his kingdom. But also you must watch what you say. What comes out of your mouth? You must be committed to saying only what God says. Don't cancel what God is doing with your mouth. Say only what God has said about you. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are what? In the power of the tongue. And they 
that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So we eat the fruit of what we say. So speak life only. Don't say, this headache will kill me. This is my headache. See, you have owned it. No. Say only the things that God has said in his word. He said, you will live and you will not die. I command your mouth to be corrected. No more evil report out of your mouth in Jesus' precious name. Now, somebody will say, well, is that not lying? Shouldn't I say what I'm feeling? No. You say what you want to see, not what you are seeing. If what you are seeing is not what you want, you don't say it. You speak, there was darkness, there was void. Nothing was happening. Genesis 1. And God said, let there be light. Did you read there and say, you know, uh, let's, let it just be like that? No. Spoke. The right thing. What must be. So you speak what must be. And that is what it is. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Psalm 34, verse 12. Your mouth, watch your mouth. You know what they always, we always tell kids, watch your mouth, right? So we must watch our mouth, mind our mouth. What man is it that desires life and love? And I know all of us desire life and we love many days. That we may see good. All of us desire this thing. This is yes, yes, yes. But see what we must do. Keep your tongue, verse 13. Keep this tongue, keep it. Stop talking, yeah, cha, 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 talking chaff everywhere. Keep your tongue from evil. If it is not edifying, you don't need to say it. That is there, I must say. Why? It's evil. We don't speak evil. Keep your tongue from speaking guile and your lips from speaking guile. Receive that grace. Jesus' precious name. Somebody is blessed. Give the Lord a clap of you. Now, today also, you know, it's three in one service. It's our anointing service. And I'm sure. In this service, you have brought your bottles of oil, so get it ready now. Because we are about to receive power. Amen. There are things speaking. There are devils. There are situations. There are medical issues or whatever issue it is. That is why we have come to this service. It's called the anointing service. So you have brought your bottle of oil. Get it ready. Open it now. Now, in this service, on every third week of every month, is our anointing, holy, monthly holy anointing service. And in this service, we come to receive power of God by the mystery of the anointing. Now, the oils that we bring, we shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost. We pray over it, sanctify it, blesses it. It becomes the holy anointing oil. And then two mysteries, right? Two applications. We anoint our heads and we take shots. And the power of the Holy Spirit goes to work. That's why we, it's called a mystery. But somebody will say, but how, how I need to understand the chemistry and the physics and the physiology of what is happening. No, it's the spirituality you need to understand. Amen. Because it's a spiritual mystery. But your understanding is coming alive now in Jesus' precious name. Now, so this is the anointing oil. What is in the oil that makes it work, that breaks things, the yokes, destroy bodies, that give it life? Now, in this bottle, after as we anoint, I mean, uh, sanctify and blesses it, it becomes the holy anointing oil. And then what this will happen? The Spirit of God indwell that oil. And that's what we call the yoke destroying power of God. Yoke destroying power. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 25 and 27. He said, For a very little while, in verse 25, the indignation shall cease, my anger in their destruction. Every indignation, every spirit of corruption. Every garment of shame we seize right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And it shall come to pass. It will come to pass right now as this oil comes upon your head and as we take a shot. In verse 27, he said, now it shall come to pass right now, this very minute, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the burden shall be taken off of your shoulder. Every burden of indebtedness, of fear, or some people cannot even close their eyes to sleep because they wonder if they will wake up. That burden is taken off of you. The yoke is destroyed forever by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The pain is gone, never to return in Jesus' precious name. Now, Isaiah 59 verse 19, so they shall fear the name of the Lord from across the nations of the earth, I'm paraphrasing, from the west. His glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord. Who is the Spirit of the Lord? The Holy Spirit. Indwelling in the oil. 
the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, as this oil comes upon your head, the Spirit of the Lord is lifting up a standard against him. You know that, what, what that means? That means you don't measure. When the Holy Spirit says, this is the standard, the standard is perfection, is wholeness, is vitality. So you say now, go out, get out. This is not the standard. The standard is not sickness, it's not weakness, it's not lack and want, it's not fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, as this oil comes upon your head, this morning, that yoke is destroyed forever. That yoke is destroyed forever. So what is in the oil is the healing power of God. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit that breaks yokes, destroys bodies. And that is your testimony in Jesus' precious name. But of course, there's also breakthrough power in the oil. Breakthrough. Now, you receive power, then you begin to do impossible things. In quote, what men dare not do, you begin to do it. That is your portion in Jesus' precious name. David was anointed in the midst of his brethren, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. And the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day, from that day, from this day, the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon you. Greater grace is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. As a result of that oil, the Spirit of the Lord that came upon David, see what he began to do. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. From there, 18 verse 5. And David went out, where everywhere. Wheresoever Saul sent him, he went. And as a result, consequent to the anointing, he behaved himself wisely. Now he's operating in divine wisdom. Now, as a result, he was set over everyone. As this oil comes upon you, you will be set over everyone. He was accepted in the sight of all the people. In who? Everyone. Whether you, it's not about I like you or not. There's oil upon your head. You don't worry about who likes you. They don't, if they don't like you, they shut up. <laughs> because the oil upon your heart, your head. He said, e everywhere he goes, it's after you leave, they will now start murmuring. <laughs> they will now say, how, how, what happened? How come I didn't say anything? Because you know what? The oil. He was accepted everywhere in the sight of all the people, in the sight of source servant. As this oil comes upon you, divine favor will follow you. In Jesus' precious name. Well, I know we all desire this, everyone in this service, but it's accessible to only a few. Well, to many, but the few that will receive Jesus, those of us that are already in, is our Lord and Savior. But I'm speaking to you now, under the sound of my voice, you are at home. If Jesus Christ is not your Lord, if you anoint your head, it will only be oily. There's where to start. And that is the place of coming to Jesus. Right there, anyone in the church right now, in this sanctuary, will you rise up? You are not born again, or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, you must come to him. Or you are at home, right there, in your living room, on that device, you are before your TV. Will you go before the Lord now and begin to pray? Look up to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning. Oh, I repent of all my sins, my transgressions. Forgive me, Jesus, because I know that you died for me. On the third day, you rose again, that I may have life. Lord, come into my heart. Take it over completely. Oh, let the Holy Spirit empower me now to live for you, to do your will. And I thank you. Because now I'm born again, I'm redeemed of the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Congratulations, you said that prayer. Please check in, wcito.ca. And there's a tab there, make sure you click that, that you gave your life to Jesus. We'll be able to call back and follow up with you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. If somebody blessed this morning, give that all a clap offering and rise on your feet. Bring out your bottles now. We are about to receive power. Open it up. This is the holy anointing oil. And in case somebody's around you, they don't have a bottle, please let them have a little bit on their palm because we need to do this mystery. We'll be anointing our heads and taking a shot shortly. Now, let not your head lack oil. David was anointed in the midst of his brethren and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. So, as you anoint your head this morning, the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon you. Divine favor will follow you in the name of Jesus. And of course, the second application of this mystery, we take a shot for all that believe. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. There, the mystery of the fan and the fire. For whatever is buying and selling in you, organs failing or have failed, nothing, you don't even know. You just feel movement or pain. As you take a shot, of this liquid fire, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
every evil report is swallowed up. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare this oil blessed. This is now the holy anointing oil. And as it comes upon you and as you take a shot, the Spirit of the Lord goes to work. Receive power for breakthrough. Power to be favored. To be above all ones, everywhere, in the name of Jesus Christ. All that believe, anoint your head and appropriate those blessings. Let the, in the fingers or your palm, and then take a shot. Take a shot of the oil. This is the mystery of the fan and the fire, in the name of Jesus Christ. After the word of Matthew 3, verse 11 and 12, the Holy Spirit go to work now. Every organ. He said he will thoroughly purge you. He will sweep you up. Whatever is not working, begin to work. Now speak to it. You know those specific things. You know what it is. The doctors told you, you don't have this, or you have too much of this. Whatever it is. Father, liquid fire of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. I am the anointed of the Lord. Let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body now the mark of Christ, the mark of Christ. In the name of Jesus, I shut down every noise. In the name of Jesus Christ, every demonic noise. Noise in the city, noise in your body, noise in your mind, noise in the highways and the byways, or wherever, on your job. Every demonic noise, shut up now. In the name of Jesus, only God's plan and purpose will come to pass for you. In the name of Jesus, speak it forth. You are the anointed of the Lord. Everything is working. Your businesses, your careers blossoming. Nothing can stop you. You are married, wonderfully married. Divine connection. Wherever your spouse is, he must come now. You are fruitful. You cannot be barren. I cast the root, whether it's medical or diabolical. Whatever is responsible to this challenge, the Spirit of the Lord swallows it up. The fire of the Holy Ghost, consume it now. Speak, speak, speak in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, David went everywhere. Whithsoever he went, he was favored. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says he behaved himself wisely. Now I operate in divine wisdom. I always know what to do. Jesus knows what to do. John 6, 6, I know what to do. I'm not confused. In the name of Jesus, the veil over your eyes is removed. The fire of the Holy Ghost consume every anti-covenant issue. In the name of Jesus Christ, as you go everywhere across the city, on your job, you are favored. In the streets, you are favored. In the name of Jesus, everywhere, everywhere where they will welcome you with open arms in the name of jesus not just you your name your sin number anything and everything your resume that represents you your file is favored in the name of jesus christ this week is your week of favor because you are the anointed of the lord the anointing open doors that no one can shut the doors are open to you the doors are open to you. It shall never be shut. The Bible says your doors will remain open. The daughters of Tyre will bring gifts. Favor, favor from far, from near, from expected places, unexpected places. You are favored because you are the anointed of the Lord. You are anointed this day. You are anointed this day. The anointing that open doors. He make the crooked way straight. Oh, in the name of Jesus, it's going ahead of you now. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord, the host of heaven, they are bringing you in. They are bringing you in. You are established. You are established. No one will move you. No one can move you. Nothing moves you anymore. In the name of Jesus, your businesses, your careers blossoming. Oh, he will show you the way, which way to go, how to go. And everything you need to go, he supplies it right now. In the name of Jesus, as they went from one nation to another, he suffered no one to trouble them. No more trouble. Nothing troubles you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are the anointed of the Lord. The anointing has come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, God begin to speak to you, show you new things, new things, new levels, new levels of liftings, of promotions. In the name of Jesus, you are going to greater heights. Thank you, Father. Now, thank him. Thank him and thank him in the same intensity. Give him all the glory. Thank him because the anointing is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the anointing is speaking. It's speaking. 
everywhere I go, across Canada, across the world, in the name of Jesus, no door will be shut against me. Favor is answering to me. Thank you, Father, because I'm the beloved of the Lord. We we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, here, see what he said. Isaiah 25, verse 4 and 5. For you have been a strength to the poor. You see, remember how we assess one of the gateways, right? He who considers the poor. Who does not shut his eyes to the poor. He said now, for you have been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy. Isaiah 25, verse 4. In his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Now, what will he do? Verse 5. Again, I say it. Every evil noise is shut down. Amen. God shall bring down the noise of strangers Amen. as the heat in a dry place. Amen. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. Amen. You will not experience heat anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the things that causes you anxiety and fear, it has ended now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have served God and continue to serve him. Today is the combination of operation. Who is the Lord's side? You have prayed and continue to pray. Kingdom advancement prayers. In spite of the lockdown and the shutdown, Canada or Ontario at least is shut down. But in spite of that, you still serve God. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have considered the things of God, the kingdom of God. I decree the heavens open over you. God is bringing down the noise of the strangers. He's shutting them up never to speak any evil about you anymore. In Jesus' precious name. I declare you blessed and you are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is blessed. Give that all a clap of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please have your seat momentarily. Just two, three minutes. Uh, pardon me. Uh, for some of us, there's very special people. You are worshiping us for the first time. Today is your first Sunday right here in Winners Chapel, Toronto. You are in the sanctuary. Will you please rise up and come to the front? We want to welcome you properly. We're glad you came. But if you are online, today is your first service right here on our stream, online streaming. Please make sure you check in, wcito.ca, and make sure you navigate and click on that first time worshiper tab and fill out the form. But for people in the house, please come. Please come. Is somebody clapping for Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your name. You see, no one can come to the Father except those whom Jesus brings. And Jesus has brought these wonderful ones today. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have come to Zion today. You step your feet in Zion. Every virtue of Zion is speaking for you. In the name of Jesus, just as they saw Saul when he returned from the mountain of the Lord, 1 Samuel chapter 9 and chapter 10, something changed about him. He said, the Lord said, I will give you a new heart. And as he left the presence of Samuel, he got a new heart. Every word the prophet told him came to pass that self same day. As you go from this mountain, the blessings of the Lord follows you. Amen. You have come to Jesus Christ, not to see a man, to Jesus. In the name of Jesus, whatever was a challenge before you came is already a testimony. Throughout this week and the remaining days of your life, you will only see good. God is going ahead of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever causes you worry, anxiety, or fear, it has ended now. No devil can touch you because you are the anointed of the Lord in Jesus' precious name. Every virtue that speaks in Zion is speaking for you. So you return now rejoicing in Jesus' precious name. We're glad you came. So please, pardon me, follow my wonderful sister here. They will take care of you in the other room, and I'll give you some more packages in the name of Jesus. Give that all a clap for free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is somebody blessed? Thank you, Lord. Now, today is the culmination of our operation, who is on the Lord's side. And we thank God for his wondrous uh, works in our midst. In spite of the, you know, open today, shut down tomorrow, uh, but God has been faithful, confirming his word. We have stayed, you know, we heard that testimony our mother shared, what our father, our, father, our papa said, right? If you can't go out, you can go up. Amen. We may have been restricted in going out because everywhere is shut down, but we have been going up and we have been praying and God has heard us. Look at, is it not Jesus? In the midst of the lockdown, he brought three people. 
physically to the church. And many more are online. Oh, give him all the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. So for everyone that has engaged in any level in this operation who is on the Lord's side, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive your just reward. Amen. Receive your speedy reward. In Jesus' precious name. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, but the trick though is don't relent. It doesn't end today. Man, the prayers and the reaching out and the invitation does not end today. Say, thank God it's over. No, it continues. So first thing of tomorrow morning, covenant of prayer, 6 a.m. From Monday to Thursday, I mean Friday, sorry, 6 to 7 a.m. Saturday is at 9 a.m. Every day, one hour prayer. We're online and we're praying. We have that link. You don't have it. Get on our website or call the church office. And we'll be glad to share that. And all of our weekly activities also. This Wednesday is what? Midweek service. We're waiting on the Lord. Be sure you don't miss any service. Yes, we may not be able to come physically, but we are, the devil can't shut down the church. We are online. The word is coming again and again. So receive it in Jesus' precious name. So midweek service, 6 p.m. on Wednesday to 7.30. We meet online. Hallelujah. But of course, we heard that in the announcement. The province is going down to, it's already on, but uh, midnight tonight, uh, Monday morning, we have, uh, the provincial rule is 10 people for indoor or outdoor uh, gatherings, 10. So that limits our ability to allow people to come to service. We have to follow the rules and the regulations. But uh, so the online registration portal is shut down for next Sunday. But so please make sure you uh, connect online. All of our platforms, the social media, the website, we're coming to you on YouTube or wherever you uh, get the service from. And understand also, um, I think in the background, yes, you can see in my background, you are able to, um, we're able to stream you from your homes into the service. Right there, we have our wonderful uh, family, uh, you know, from, I see from North Bay uh, or South Bay, every, anywhere in the world. You just simply scan that Q, is it QR, the code, or on your browser and you log in and the wonderful media people will be able to have you come into the service in, in, at least behind us, right? So if, if you like to do that, that is an option. Amen. Praise the Lord. So don't forget to always check in. Next Sunday, next Sunday is our what? Financial Fortune Banquet Service. Hallelujah. It's also the end of the month Thanksgiving and dedication service. So um, unfortunately, we'll not be able to come physically to the church for Thanksgiving and dedication, but we'll do it online. We've been doing that. So you have a child to dedicate or uh, whatever it is, or uh, anniversary, thanking God, make sure the same QR code or the same number, church office number, it does not change, or the media, that browser. Uh, we use the same thing for our uh, prayers. So please register, and the media will have you ready in the portion of that service to stream you in for either baby dedications or the Thanksgiving. The Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. Good news, good news, good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just two weeks to go, the 40th anniversary of this great commission. Are you excited? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know all of us are partakers of this grace. The virtues at work in this great commission, we just spoke briefly earlier on, we know where God has brought us from. I know I was part of the multitudes that God showed to God's servant, the destitutes and wailing and crying. From the beginning, it was not so. But now the hour has come to liberate the whole world from the oppressions of the devil. Oh, I was under oppression. I didn't know my family was. But God delivered us, and we are delivered forever. <laughs> Amen. So the liberation man is what we celebrate. I'm part of that story. I know you are. You have a testimony. Amen. So one week from May 2nd to the 9th, just, you know, Shiloh protocol, right? And God, servant, God told him, he said, be what? 40 Shilohs. You see how powerful it is? One Shiloh. And then this will be comparable to 40. So whatever you can do, make sure you don't miss that one week. Receive that grace in Jesus' precious name. So all of us will be here. Don't worry about lockdown. They can't lock Jesus down. This good news cannot be locked down. So whether the devil likes it or not, we will be partakers of the 40th anniversary in Jesus' precious name. Rise on your feet. Hallelujah. Now, one more time, let's return and thank him and give him all the glory. Thank him and thank him for the anointing. All the yoke is broken, is destroyed. You will live and not die. 
Long life is our heritage, is our portion. Lord, I thank you. Give him all the glory. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, today as you go, you go in peace. The hand of the Lord rests mightily upon you. Now, again, I don't take this thing to, these are not pre-planned. So somebody will say, what did you hear in church? At least I heard this one. Isaiah 25. Every demonic noise. You know, there are noises, things that you hear or don't hear. Medical, financial, immigration, doesn't matter. Anything that is not of God is a noise. And he has brought it down. Yeah. This week is your week of favor. Yeah. As you go, doors open to you. No good door will be shut against you. All of your expectations are delivered. Even if they have said no, it is reversed. In Jesus' precious name, you are blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now, together, shall we share the goodness of the Lord. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Please, again, don't forget to pick up any of the books of the month, or both, just two. Make sure you pick one up. You get greater insight to this financial fortune we talk about. You are blessed. Now, welcome to 2021, your year of the supernatural turnaround. Then expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. God bless you, everyone, online, in-house. The Lord blesses you. For those of us that came in-house, you are blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, all oh, the blessings of God, great doors open to you in Jesus' precious name. Please be careful out there. Obey every rule. Wear your mask, social distance. It's for a short period. You will not be found missing. The plague will not come near you in the name of Jesus Christ. And for all of our workers, nurses, doctors, essential workers, or you don't even work because we go out sometimes. In the name of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Spirit surround you. This plague will not come near you. Strength is delivered to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Have a great week.